What is up? It's your boy Johnny Shreve, IFBB Pro, Mr. Tell Like It Is. Welcome back to another episode of Coaching Up. Today we've got another Coaching Up episode with your boy, the Godfather of Bodybuilding, Charles Glass. Yep, I got to send another video for me to analyze and kind of break it down. And I just saw this video. It's called Build Upper Chest with Guillotine Press. And I've already watched the video, did my, you know, my film analysis on this as well. And this is gonna end up being a how to actually do incline press properly. Either way, I thought I'd get over this right now and it's gonna end up being a really good chest video because I wanna show you guys how the chest actually works because there's still some confusion in terms of like how to load the chest and especially with this, it can make things very confusing if you're trying to build your upper chest. Anyway, let's get after it. That's it, that's it, come on. Good, right here, right here. Go, up, that's it, good. The entire clavicle area, Charles, yeah. is just filling up really, yeah. really fast. So. All right, so um, a couple things to go over right away, and I, I think it's just best that, this is how I basically learn. So I'm gonna show, show you guys how I learn how the body works, um, how to actually train. And it's basically like just kind of studying what the muscles actually do, okay? So to get make it clear, this is a video done to build the upper chest to your pec mind. They even said your clavicle head of your chest is pumped to hell health. The entire clavicle area, Charles, yeah. is just filling up really, yeah. really fast. Okay, so understanding what that actually does. So your clavicle head, Right, your this part of your chest. Let's just go through the entire chest. The entire chest, right? Either be the um, intercostal head, the sternal head, or the clavicle head, right? The intercostal head here hits a couple ribs down here, and the sternum. Then your sternal head hits the majority of the sternum. And the rib basically comes up to your, and they all come up, and then your clavicle head, sorry, and they all come to your humus. They do shoulder adduction. That's what it does. It pulls this in. That's all it does. It goes like this. Yoink. Right, but it, they all three of those help with other things too. They share, they, they all share the same thing in terms of doing this. But specifically, the clavicle head of your, of your shoulder helps with shoulder adduction as well as shoulder flexion. Right, so pulling your arm up like this is going to make your clavicle head of your chest work just as much as your anterior head of your delt. So you understand what it does. It does this, and it helps do this. Now let's walk. Let's watch a little more of the video and show you guys. A little more. Charles, this is the guillotine. Charles. Comes to it's to come all the way yeah, in the top. Yeah. Okay. Be back. Okay, so he's got this like, um, he's got his uh, his pad, his fat pad on here. And he's basically putting it there on his the thoracic spine or like your T-spine or the middle, uh, your where your traps are. And we're going really wide. And then we want to lower that right to you. So we're showing the actual where he wants to go, the upper chest. So we're hitting mid and upper chest, right? Okay, mid chest is the sternal head of your chest. So basically mid chest would be like, you know, what they're doing now, flat bench. If that makes sense, makes it most easiest to understand. Hey, what's up guys? A lot of you guys watch the video, but not subscribed. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button as well too. So next time I put a video, it'll be the first one to get it. And hopefully by now you like the video. So if you do, hit the like button. Back to the show. Roll it. There you go. Good. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you're perfect. Yeah, elbows right. right with the yeah, you're perfect. Right. Don't change anything. There you go. Good. Mhm. Mm Good. That's it. That's it. Come on. A couple things in terms of actually lifting. So give yourselves a better view here. If I'm down now, I have this in here. That's gonna kind of. I'll use this after to kind of show you guys, you know, where the load's coming. But when we're pressing, a few things. The load is coming down on this, this way, so you're getting gravity pushing you down, right? So under the elbows, when we stack our joints and pressing here, boom, here to here, there's a point where we're just pressing, you know, we're, we're trying to adduct, we're trying to push ourselves in, and then there's a point when we get to the top that now we have friction on the bar, where a dumbbell would have us doing this, right? But on a barbell, you can't do that. So down here, there's where our elbows are set, and then at the top of the lift, at this point, our arms want to pull in. So there's now pressure coming in this way. There's adduction actually happening from you just holding the bar itself, right? So stretching it down and coming up, you have this, you have this, bar of, you have this part here where you're trying to pull it in, but you can't because you're on a bar. So basically from here, and if I was, I'd be kind of doing this. If this was an actual, they have actually bar like this. Or if you were here and you down and then you basically press in and then it opens up and presses in. There's a bar like that. But again, it's not. So we're in a fixed position here. So we were constantly out here pulling in. So part of like making the chest actually work. So even, you know, sitting on a flat bench, you're going to hit the upper part of your chest. 100% you are. That's a, that's a fact. It's not, there's no way you can do abduction 
without, you can't do adduction without the, any of your chest working. So it's gonna hit all three heads for sure. I do this all the time. I always tell guys, you know, do this, you know, hold your hands like this. Actually, you know what, shirt's coming off, sorry. Slow motion B-roll. Dan, 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 to continue. Dan, 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 dan. Riding right in there. What's going on, guys? So we're gonna do some sets. So um, I made this. I, this is before for you guys to see. So if I'm sitting like this and I, I basically go like this. I'll start from here. If I go like this and I activate my chest, I cannot feel it. If I go like this and I activate my chest, I can feel a lot more, right? If I do this, I can flex it a bit, a bit. It's getting harder and harder. And the further away I go the less I have to be able to flex. The most activation I'm gonna have is when I'm in here, right? So I can flex a lot harder. Now, to hold my hands up here, I have to do shoulder flexion. My hand has to, or the part of my chest that needs to work and do what it's supposed to do because your pec minor or your clavicle, like your pec does shoulder flexion. For that to be apparent, it needs to have a load on it. There is no load on your pec minor as much here. So from here, if I just let my shoulders relax like they should, if I'm here, there's no pressure coming here. There's the lows not here. Yes, when I'm down here, when I'm pushing, I'm going to use that pec to pull it over 100%. But in terms of the weight or gravity really working, the one that's working the most is across here. It's directly on top and here. So to make this work, we need to have some type of, you know, stress or a load pulling me this way for it to work as well as for me to get pressure this way. Not only do I need a load coming down when I'm adducting the shoulder, I also need pressure or weight or load pushing me this way for me to work against it this way for my chest to work. So it will come up. So from here, right? I need this to work for my chest, for this part of my chest to really activate. And then I need a load coming from here to do the same thing. So it capitalizes on both parts of the movement, what his you know, job is, right? So let's go look at the rest of this. Good, right here, right here. Go up, guys. So right, we're aiming this back. So a couple things we can fault in this right now. So let's, okay, so right now we have this, okay? This is where the weight is. And here is where we have it. Number one, again, if we want our pec minor to work even more in this posture being in a whore, basically flat, we need his grip to go inside. And then this, this would actually work. This would, right now, if Charles Glass was like, dude, move your hands from here into here, this actually makes sense. But again, another thing he's doing too is, we have this little, you know, pad here. The pad makes complete sense if that pad is up here because that's just gonna elevate his chest to having some kind of a load pushing down on his clavicle head. If you're looking at where it is, now again, we're talking about this weight coming all the way up. Now, we're gonna show you right away. So now you can kind of see where the load should be coming because we're looking at gravity. Again, we're shifting this bar this way. That's where the bar and the load will actually stay with these bands on. Now, a couple things. When I was talking about the bar at the top, now if you think about it, from here, and I was weight on my hands, Move up a bit. At the top, there's not much friction for my hands to pull in from being out this way. Because again, if you look at it, if I go like this, even from this way, even my clavicle head isn't doing much. If I do this, it's already working. So if that weight is, if I'm here and lowering this weight to here, and then basically pressing it up, I'm gonna get a lot more activation in my clavicle head. If you look at it, from here to here, I'm strong. From, if you look from here to here on my chest, you see it's tight. Out here, it's not as tight, right? It should look like this and then pressing here. What's up guys, check it out. I'm going through all of this in detail, in depth with my two day training camp in LA at Flex Gym. So if you wanna know more about that guys, hit the description below. Don't miss out. You're gonna be going over everything to optimize your training. Literally, you're gonna know more about training than you ever have and just you know, dodge being bamboozled by everything on YouTube, except me. So check it out now, description below, peace. Okay, so we get shirts off. So we'll be able to see it's a lot better now, this is great. This guy already has a good chest, if you look at it. This guy has, okay, so he's got a chest that before this, he already has a built chest up here, regardless. 
So that means when he trains chest, he probably responds really well here, no matter where he puts the damn bar. So of course he's gonna feel it there. Now, number one, how he's pressing, for us to be able to get to that point, we have to do this. And now doing this is just, for me, is just not optimal. If I have to do shoulder elevation, using my traps to pull myself up here to get the bar down this way here, number one, not safe. Two, shoulders are completely and utterly vulnerable, right? That isn't a joint that should be stabilizing up here. It should be stabilizing here. So in order to do this, and even doing that when you're doing shoulder depression, it's gonna help the actual angle at the bottom. If we're up here, we don't get much of a stretch from here at all. We do here. It's gonna be here and here, right? Okay, so I want you to watch where his, the stress is in his, in his pecs, right? Now, I would've just put this thing down more and elevated him up like this to get like 50 degree incline. So for me to stack the joints with this, I have to do shoulder elevation. There's no way I can do this without flaring my elbows out to the side. And there you go. So this is riding back into his traps and up. They're being stretched from here, but there's not much activation here. Where do you see the most of this? Let's go to the top, sorry. Where do you see the most of this? It's here. So at the bottom of the lift, you're gonna get a big stretch here for sure, but at the top of the lift, you're not gonna get that full contraction because your arms end up out this way. So you end up getting, see the top? The top of the lift, you don't see it anymore. You see most of this barrel down into his rear, into his anterior delts and then to his traps. The angle of his elbows, the angle of his elbows are behind the bar. So he's not even stacking the joints. So that lift is coming completely. I'm gonna give you an example from the side. Okay, so again, when we're looking at getting in here, pressing this weight, the weight is coming down this way. I have to shift up here. And the weight's coming down and he's automatically here. So that weight is shifting here and then he's holding it here, bracing with his traps and scaps, pulling it together. And the weight's still here, but there's nothing pushing on here. And then we're back up and then we're back down this way. If you see his first thing he's doing is here. When we want it to be here, we wanna push our weight down here. Now again, we also have his little plate. I got a little pad here, whatever, but he has it right here on his back, which is gonna make it arch that much more. We got a crazy arch on my back from here. That's pushing my chest, this part of my chest up higher. So I'm losing that even more. And it doesn't change. If you think about it, it doesn't change this part at all. It just changes here. Because then when I'm down to here, and letting it shift back here, it's not doing anything. The thing that makes the most sense would be putting it here which will elevate your shoulders a bit and get your chest higher. So when you're pressing, you brace from here and you could press to here and up. And then again, putting your hands in closer, we put the stress on it that much more. So we're coming down to the top of our chest. We can still stay underneath and press up. That would make more sense than this. Incline, what makes the most sense to hit this part of your chest is to elevate it. Because what happens is, if you think about it, now I'm on my back and for me to get myself to my back, so now for me to bring my arms up, they're on an angle and they have to stay up. And the weight's here, pushing from here. So that weight is higher and now my chest is activated that much more from here. Wherever I'm at, no matter what, the first place it's coming is on my clavicle head of my chest. So from here, now we're down and we're up. And if, even from sitting here, go back to this, so it shouldn't be here in the first place, in terms of where my chest is activated, from here to here, my hands this way, you can see how thick it is here. If I open up, it gets loose. You see the difference between this and this. This is your end point, my end point with no leverage or weight on it at all, just for my hands sitting up here, and my thinnest position from here with no weight. Again, just gravity weight up here. It's not, it's soft. Me just doing this is hard. I can just pop it down a little more and show you the exact same thing. I'm here, you can see from here, it's loose, and I'm just letting gravity hold my hand up from here, and then I bring it in, just gravity here, and it's tighter, just from sitting here. So between this and this is basically finishing an abduction. Okay, so just to, just to like wrap it up, like great intentions, it makes sense if we change a couple of things, then you could just see how like just slight angles 
can change an entire workout out or just like the intentions of it. I see, I see what I was doing with this in terms of trying to hit the clavicle head of the chest because again, when we're doing flat bench, the entire chest is going to work. If you're genetically gifted where your top of your chest grows more quickly than others, so if you're doing flat bench, the clavicle head of your chest will take over no matter what. So genetics definitely play a role in that. But if we're really trying to build the pec minor or your clavicle head, whatever it is, a couple things. Number one, it needs to just adduct, right? Coming right inside. Two, it needs to have some kind of, some level of a load to challenge you from doing shoulder flexion. So you're not gonna do anything here with your chest if it's down here. The second I start to have to move my arm up, you can see my chest starting to work and pulling it in. So it needs to do some form of that when you're doing chest. So again, being in an incline, any incline, and then having your hands a little bit closer will actually challenge your pec minors that much more. So other than that, again, if we really wanna hit our chest, doesn't matter where you're at, flat bench, incline, decline, we need shoulder depression. We need this to happen to set our shoulders to really stretch that full range of motion in doing shoulder adduction at the end. Again, we need to be here, not here. And this is like the recipe for disaster and getting injuring your shoulders and then being that guy at the gym that does this all the time. I don't know if you've ever seen, what's his name? He was awesome. Black Sheep. Hey Siri, who's the main character in Black Sheep? I found this on the web. Chris Farley. <laughs> Chris Farley's like, oh my God. <laughs> He's, that's what holds Chris Farley to be like, you don't want to be Chris Farley benching, all right? Don't be like this. Can we get back on the right track? Here's you, here's Matt, there's you, there. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that brought a lot more clarity to understanding how to load the chest. In terms of like loading the clavicle head of your chest, the pec minor, upper chest, the small part of your chest, the pigeon chest, whatever you want to name it. I hope it made sense. Anyway guys, if you liked the video, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share. You know, become all the time like it is, transparent, vulnerable truth. For coaching, johnnysheep.com. Book yourself a phone consult if you want to know what I do and what coaching is all about. Take me 30 minutes. I don't know the consult. I deduct the consult off any package that you pick. Also, guys, hit the discount codes, promo codes in the description below to help change your life or save your life for the better. And also, add me on Instagram and TikTok. Send me your progress pics, your training pics, and your video clips, and I'll repost for you because you know how it is. Iron sharp as iron. Progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep gene chasing. Peace.